Hey guys, Dave here. So the last episode we went herping for the frogs and toad species here at Madre Selva Biological Station deep in the Peruvian Amazon. Well in this episode we're going to go herping for the snakes and lizards of Madre Selva. There are some of the most incredibly unique reptile species found anywhere on earth here. So if you want to know more about Peru, if you want to see more about the adventures that I've had here, check out my vlog channel. The link is in the description below and there's just so much more to this place than just the reptiles. There's so many different critters here and the plant life and the culture of Peru. So again, that link is in the description. So check out that vlog channel. I daily vlog down here. So hopefully you like that channel and want to subscribe to that as well, but check it out. So without any further ado, let's go herping for those snakes and lizards here at Madre Selva Biological Research Center here deep in the Peruvian Amazon on Zilla Presents the Reptile Channel Adventure. The Madre Selva Biological Station lies on the banks of the Amazon. It was founded in 1994 and protects about 480 acres of rainforest and manages another thousand more acres of community land. It is a place of incredible beauty unique on Earth. Life flourishes everywhere here and takes on some of the strangest forms. And exploring this place invokes the same sense of wonder we often leave behind in our childhoods. As Mike and Marty ventured down one path, Matt and I set down another. There are two places reptiles live in the rainforest, on the ground and in the trees. The collared forest gecko is a diurnal species of gecko. Sexual dimorphism is broadly evident in these lizards. Males, like this one, are much more colorful than the drab, cryptic coloration of the females. The coral snakes in South America generally don't follow the red next to yellow rule. In fact, most of them don't. The aquatic coral snake was one of the most common encountered on this trip and it is one of the largest coral snakes, reaching up to six feet in length. They rarely stray away from water where they hunt eels and fish. Look at this pile of leaves on the forest floor. Now look again. Can you see the lizard? No? Well that's exactly the point. These lizards have taken mimicry to a whole new level. Look at the cross lines on the tail which perfectly mimics the stick attached to the leaf. This successful lizard's best defense is to stay perfectly still in a patch of dead leaves. Almost perfectly camouflaged on the forest floor is a baby South American lancehead. It is one of the most common venomous snakes in the tropics and claims the most lives every year. This strikingly beautiful snake is also sometimes known as the crowned false boa. It is a rear-fanged, egg-laying colubrid. Not a lot is known about its natural history or the potency of its venom, but it appears to have little if any effects on humans. The forest racer is also a neotropical colubrid. They are diurnal and are both terrestrial and arboreal. They feed mainly on tree frogs, but also other anurans and lizards as well. They have been observed to eat anurans that secrete poisons that make them unpalpable to other snakes or, even worse, kill them if ingested. This one posed in a classic defense posture allowing me to film it, and then true to its name, in a flash, he was gone. We continued for miles through the thick jungle, stopping to look in all the ravines along the way for snakes, like this banded water snake. There are few similarities between South American and North American water snakes. Both consume the same general diet of various amphibians and fish, but whereas North American types only have an anticoagulant in their saliva, these snakes produce a neurotoxin that is of little consequence to humans, but of course, lethal to its prey. 
As we moved on through the thick jungle, our gaze shifted from the forest floor up into the trees. This snake needs no introduction amongst terpticulturists. Its attitude is legendary. There are two distinct color phases. The garden phase, like this one, that have earth tone coloration with varying pattern. While the colored phase have combinations of red, orange, or yellow, they are easily agitated and almost always on a heightened state of alert. They can grow to over two meters long and have sharp needle-like teeth with elongated teeth in the front of the lower and upper jaw. These teeth are instrumental in catching the snake's primary food source, birds, which they can snatch out of the air in mid-flight. Of the tree-dwelling lizards of the Amazon, this one is the most beautiful and the most common. It is diurnal and arboreal, living most of its life adhered to the sides of tree trunks, descending only to lay eggs. The turnip-tailed geckos, one of my favorite geckos in the Amazon, are larger-bodied geckos that are little smaller than a tokay. Look closely at the eyes. They are the only neotropical lizards to have no movable eyelids. They get their name from the tail's swollen appearance, which is used for fat storage. A knolls are an iguana and suborder of lizards. There are more anole species than any other amniote pteropod in the world, and those are four-legged animals who lay eggs or give live birth on land. The Amazon forest dragon is also known as the Amazon wood lizard. This awesome lizard is diurnal, and like other arboreal lizards, they spend most of their time in the trees, hunting and ambushing their diet of spiders, caterpillars, crickets, or other arthropods. They are often confused in the field with this lizard. The olive tree runner is also known as a blue-lipped tree lizard or harlequin race runner. These prove to be common lizards that seem to congregate in the trees around camp. Blunt-headed tree snakes, like their snail-eating cousins, are all head on a long, slender body. They have enormous eyes, making up over a quarter of its head size. This nocturnal arboreal snake is one of the most beautiful arboreal snakes in the area. During the day, you can find them lying motionless on the trees, until they are unintentionally disturbed by a group of herpers. Such a cool and beautiful snake. Members of the genus Dipsis, like this one, are related to the blunt-headed tree snake, but are unique from other snakes. Their pupils are very distinct, and as most snakes are known to have very poor vision, relying on smell and vibrations to detect signs of prey and predators, these snakes have vertical pupils, which allow for the snake to look down without having to reveal its location by moving its head. Like the name suggests, they eat mainly slugs and land snails, a very plentiful food source in the permawet jungles of Peru. Night in the rainforest is nothing short of invigorating. Most species here are nocturnal, but because they are active, they are also more difficult to spot as opposed to finding them sleeping on branches during the day. I still have eyes on him, barely. But when you do see something, you have to get your shots fast as they are always on the move, as was the case with this adult lancehead. Lanceheads are oviviviparous, meaning that they give live birth. Adult venom has a different composition that allows the injected venom to begin digesting its prey quicker. Although this one was on the move, he eventually coiled nicely, relying on his cryptic coloration to hide in plain sight. It obviously didn't work well enough. These tiny geckos were almost impossible to spot at night. They are also known as clawed geckos or pygmy geckos, and while they are nocturnal, the forest anoles were not. We woke this one up as we passed by, and in the field at the time, I summed up this striking little anole. That is gorgeous. It's a nice one, though. Yeah. 
This region of the Amazon rainforest was truly a herping adventure. We encountered dozens of individuals every day, some common, some rare. But even as incredible as Madre Selva is, we would soon find out it paled in comparison to where we were going next. So the echo tour I'm on is through MT Expeditions. It's through Project Amazonas. And not only do they take really good care of us and feed us well and guide us through the rainforest, but the money for this tour gets recycled into the local economy. And it also goes to protect the natural rainforest around us by buying all this land and turning it into a biological research center. Not only that, but it also helps the people of Peru along the river. It builds schools and communities and it goes to build medical clinics that the people along the river simply don't have access to. So I put the link to MT Expeditions and Project Amazonas in the description below. You guys have got to check it out and think about coming down here on a tour. It's not as expensive as you might think. So again, that link is in the description. Email Matt Cage. He will tell you everything you need to know about coming down here on one of these tours. I highly recommend it. So anyway, we're leaving here and we are going to another biological research center, Santa Cruz, which is even deeper into the Peruvian Amazon. So I'm looking forward to going there and seeing what we can find there. And we will see you then on another episode of Zilla Presents the Reptile Channel Adventures.